Hi everyone, it's Belinda from Mum Central and Australian Baby Bargains and I'd like to welcome you all here tonight to join us with Krista from Phil Hoffman Travel as we talk about cruising for families. I um, know that a lot of you are curious about cruising as a family holiday idea and we get a lot of mums writing in and dads writing in for advice wanting to know more about it. Um, it's such a fabulous cruising holiday that um, we decided to uh, go approach the experts, um, the Phil Hoffman Traveller experts in cruising holidays and get them to come put together a special presentation for us to give us the lowdown from beginning to end about how affordable, convenient and how much fun a family holiday can be on a cruise ship. So welcome Krista, it's great to have you on board tonight. Well, thank you, Belinda, um, and welcome, everybody. I should say this should come with a warning because once you start cruising, it does become an addiction because people just really see how wonderful it all is. So there we go. Feel warned. Thanks, Krista. Now, I just want to get a quick show of hands um, if you can let us know that you can hear us. Just write in the chat box just to say, yes, we can hear you or put your hands up. Thank you, Stacey. That's good to know. And Mel, hi, how are you going? Oh, and you, Deborah. Fabulous. All right. Well, without further ado, Phil Hoffman Travel are one of Australia's leading travel agents. They um, have won numerous awards and are really well renowned for um, cruising holidays. So um, I say we may as well go straight to the top and speak with the best on, you know, a subject that they know so much about and they are very well renowned in what they're doing. So Krista, without further ado, if you'd like to take it away. Okay, thank you so much. And I think, um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I have worked for Phil Hoffman Travel probably for about 15 years, having been addicted to travel and cruising. And when I talk to you about cruising with family, I've actually taken mine when they were just three years old and one year old. So that probably started a love of cruising. Now, a little bit about Phil Hoffman Travel. We have won some wonderful accolades. We're proudly South Australian, have a wonderful team of around about 130 South Australians that we employ. We've got eight branches across Adelaide, and we'll talk a little bit about those at the end where we're located, including Victor Harbour. And probably the most important thing on that particular slide is our 24-7 emergency assist. A lot of people say, you know, look, that's, everything's fine, but what happens if something goes wrong or if we need to change something when we're away? Phil Hoffman Travel have a staff member that can access the phone and your booking 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's a little person travelling with you that can answer any queries, make any changes and give you absolute peace of mind. So that's really, really been one of our highlights. So why to choose? Why choose to cruise? The um, whole reason to um, to choose uh, to, to cruise would be to unpack once, and you're going on holidays. You just really want to relax. It's an ideal holiday, full of lots of inclusions, which makes it wonderful for budgeting. You visit beautiful little islands that you may not be able to get to um, otherwise. Um, um, if you're flying in and flying out. It's a holiday for the whole family and it's excellent value for money as you'll see with some of our slides as we move along. Uh, why is cruising perfect for the whole holiday? We think the price is right. The value for money spent is absolutely outstanding. There are some unique advantages over comparable priced land holidays. And I did a little comparison today just so I could give you an idea. I looked at a family of four having 10 nights in Fiji and then flying from Adelaide to Sydney, connecting on the international flight with transfers. The whole thing um, was costing over $1,000 more than what the cruise would cost and it didn't even include any entertainment and it only included breakfast. So if you've had one of those holidays, in the past, maybe just give cruising a go or at least let us have a look and, and give you an idea of what the all up cost would be. Um, there's some fabulous cruise deals that you'll see as we move along. Um, it's from under $100 a night but remember 
if you booked into a hotel for $150 a night, maybe, um, then breakfast, lunch, dinner, if you go off to the pictures, you know um, how dear that can be. All these things are included on the ship. So cruise ships are very family friendly from tots to teens and from grandparents to grandchildren. So you can um, do the whole family if you want to take an extra babysitter along. Why not ask um, mum and dad to come along and, and enjoy the time with the grandchildren? Now, Kids Club Cruising Advantages. Um, a lot of people have asked us what is there to do for the kids on board. There's, there's kids clubs absolutely for sure and they vary from ship to ship. But generally, from two years old, some of the ships start earlier at one, but from two to 17. And within that age group, we probably have three different little sections where you have activities for the, the little ease and then for the next age group, maybe five to nine, and then for the teens as well. So the two-year-olds don't need to be playing with a 10-year-old, so that's really fantastic. And the activities, educational programs, cooking demonstrations, um, kids' pool facilities, absolutely second to none. You've got supervised night activities, so that gives you a chance to go out and have dinner, maybe sneak in that romantic dinner when the kids are entertained. The ba there are babysitters available and the kids are entertained in a safer environment so you can really enjoy that well-deserved break. So what we're going to be talking about tonight are just some of the cruises from Australia to make things um, a little closer to home as we advertise. We're going to be talking about Carnival Cruise Line because that's that fantastic competition that we've got. Royal Caribbean, p and Cruises, Princess Cruises, and we'll just touch a little bit on um, Celebrity, Disney, Norwegian and Mediterranean Shipping Company. They do some fabulous um, cruising for kids as well, but a little further afield. So, where the family becomes a family tradition. This is where you go the first time on a cruise, unpack, just absolutely enjoy it and um, start that family tradition of cruising once a year or every couple of years or maybe some uh, milestone uh, birthdays or the whole family traditions. Generally the men would say, um, what can I do on the cruise ship? And one of the men, we're going to flick over to a, a gentleman I think most people know in a short video in a moment, but this gentleman, when you see his outtakes from his first video, he didn't want to go cruising. He thought he was going to be bored. But as you'll see from the video, I think we've convinced we've got one um, family traveler now. So Belinda, we might cut over to the video. <laughs> For me, a holiday that's got something for the whole family is important. Kylie's going to want some time to herself just to chill out. And Max will always want to play with the other kids. That's why we love Carnival Cruise. I like to fire up the whole family with some healthy competition at mini golf. It's on deck 11, so there's plenty of fresh sea air. Max loves watching Dad kick Mum's butt. We have awesome spin classes in our world-class fitness facility. I've worked hand-in-hand -hand with our oddboard trainers to develop a high-performance indoor cycling program to suit all fitness levels. Remember, it doesn't have to be fun to be fun. You need to tire out the kids if you're going to get some quiet time. So let them go nuts at the waterworks. It's the perfect place for the kids to get active and burn off some of that extra soft serve. Heading to the top, desperate to get there first, hardly seems like exercise, but it's all in the name of fun. And while they're at it, you should have a go too. Just take a good look, as the kids will never want to leave. I'm speaking from experience here. It's the wildest challenge at sea. So cut the excuses and suck it up. 
You're just going to have to get out of your captain's eyes and have a crack. Kids, lead the way. Challenge mum and dad. Because you're never too old for an adrenaline fix. It's you. Fluffy, cow creation that greet you each afternoon always amazing. Max loves them too. And if you want to show off your mates when you get home, you can learn how to turn a plain white towel into something awesome. The fun times and all the details. The magic shows are mind blowing. And you'll never know if it's just the art of illusion or real magic. But the once in a lifetime chance for you to try and find out. Whether you're a shower maestro, a two beer streamer, or an Australia's Got Talent contestant in the making, everyone loves to be able to have a song once in a while. You know you do. It doesn't matter if it's KC, Greece, or Living on a Prayer. You can show us your stuff at karaoke or the Shanghai Piano Bar. I left my heart to the south around KC. You know what I'm talking about. When you want to chill out, you can pop the kids into one of our brilliant kids clubs and head up to Serenity for a cocktail or two and a little bit of you time. You know you deserve it. For stress relief, relax under the spa jets and even have a cocktail or a beer just to enhance your cruising mood. There's three spas to choose from, an old only peace in serenity or a perfect vantage point to watch the kids in the two spas on Lido. Don't miss out on your opportunity to enjoy five-star fine dining at Nouveau Restaurant. The food is absolutely delicious and every calorie is worth the extra time in the gym to burn it off. It's exactly where you'll find me for my once-a-week cheat meal. And that is just the half of the So there you go. How amazing and tempting did that video look? Now we are sending you. Sorry, Krista. Just wanted to say quickly, we are going to. No, send... I was just. <laughs> go, Belinda. We're going to send you an email directly after with um, uh, some more information, and I'll have the links to those videos in there so you can watch them again. Um, because I know quite a few of you would want to show others or have another look at them. So over to you, Krista. And I agree. Mine was a bit shaky, and I really hope that you get the opportunity to, to have a look at it straight off the internet because it's a really wonderful little video clip. It does go over different parts of the ship and how much fun Shannon had, and that's why he'll be on board quite a few cruises. I personally need to avoid them because I don't need to have him running me around the spin class. So that's what's good about cruising because you can actually do whatever you like whenever you like and the person that wants to go to the gym or the spa can um, play in those areas. So one of the questions has been what sort of a cabin is right for you? The top uh, cabin here that we're showing, and this is a, a Holland America vessel that's visiting, so the top one is an inside cabin. With It looks like it's got a window, but it's actually not. It's an inside, so no uh, views at all. The bottom cabin is an ocean view cabin, and it does have a window. So open the curtains, you've got a beautiful view of the ocean. Those windows are for viewing only, and they don't open. There's no fresh air in there. So um, the next slide will have um, the balcony cabins. And if you can afford to um, have a balcony, I can say they're absolutely wonderful. It's, it's nice to be outside in the fresh air um, to have that access. But if you do go for an inside or an ocean view because that's what the budget allows, you don't actually spend so much time in your cabin. So um, you've got lots of outside areas that you can play and chill out. The bottom one, there's a suite and there's so many different variations. Some of the ships own have beautiful family suites, so absolutely superb cruising. And I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world on some cruise ships and see some of the, the crazy suites with um, their own little plunge pools and barbecues and so forth as well. So if you want something extreme, I can find that for you as well. But let's talk about Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, the beautiful carnival spirit that's 
as it's coming into Sydney Harbour. Can't you just imagine if you had 10 days away on this, this beautiful home away from home, you do not want to get off that ship. Now Carnival Legend will be coming down this season as well, so we're very spoiled that we've got so many new ships um, in the Australian waters. You can see there the two swimming pools on top and the green thunder um, just to the side of the ship. So what facilities do Carnival have for children? We've got water slides and splash zone. We've got mini golf. We've got family comedy hours, award-winning kids programs, kids club. They've got Camp Carnival on board and they make that so much fun. And there's the age groups, two to five in circle C, 12 to 14, and then club zero to um, 15 to 17. So a lot of fun for the kids. Night house program and activities every night from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. So if you think you can stay awake, the kids can be looked after um, from 12 months to 11 years um, allowed in those facilities. So that makes um, things very special. And a lot of people say to me, well, yeah, we went on our family holiday, but the kids really didn't want to spend much time with us. They had so much fun in their own activity areas. This is Green Thunder. You may have seen it on the video. I think it was the 35 most um, scary seconds of my life. Um, it is an amazing water slide. It doesn't quite show it there, but it goes over the ocean. So you're in this um, booth and you drop uh, 10 feet and then go out the water slide. So if you're anywhere near Sydney Harbour when I was on the ship, you would be absolutely um, laughing at my screaming. Now, the next uh, slide, that, that's for the little bit bigger children, but we have got splash zones. So you've got lots of beautiful little water slides and um, water pistols, um, just absolutely stunning uh, for the littler children or the medium children. And coincidentally, that's right near the grill. So while your kids are having a wonderful time, if they get a bit hungry, no need to go inside. All you have to do is grab a towel, grab a hot dog, Maybe something more extravagant, a nice shashlik or a beautiful hamburger served right up there on the top deck near Splash Zone. So getting the feeling you're relaxed already and it's warm. So really, really fantastic. But how long has it been since you've been out for a lovely dinner? Amazing dining. So while the kids are being looked after, you can have four course meals um, or as many um, uh, courses as you like served in the main dining room and maybe rejuvenate your spirit in the day spa or while the kids are playing but it's not all formal dining you can have buffet and there's lots of um, smaller restaurants scattered around the ship for something a bit more intimate but absolutely fantastic and remember that's all included um, now we've got a copy of the menu this is up at um, the grill up on the top deck near the pool so Best barbecued yard bird, grilled kebabs, Italian sausages, granny filled veggie burgers, pig and a poke pulled pork sandwiches. So you can see they're really aimed at kids, well, and us adults as well, I guess. Um, on the left, we've got um, a family in their cabin with interconnecting. Down the bottom right, we've got the kids' club. And then we've got in the uh, serenity zone those beautiful hammocks right close to the um, bar for that sizzling cold <clears throat> lemonade. Now talking of the cabins, this is a, a view of an interconnecting cabin that Carnival do it so well. They've got so many cabins available. There, You can have a double bed for mum and dad and then you can have twin uh, beds depending what your configuration or family is. Of course for the interconnecting cabin you're paying a bit more than having four in your own cabin. Um, and there's lots of variation of those cabins. You've got the um, ocean view cabins interconnecting and uh, that's a picture of it there. Mum talking to the kids but you can also see the sofa bed um, on that previous slide. Now we're looking at the balcony cabin. So you see the kids are so interested in what's going on. There's TV 24 hours a day. You've got all the learning shows, all the Sesame Streets, all those fantastic little movies and snippets all day long um, for the children. Now that could be a balcony cabin, so you've got um, double bed there and maybe the bunk beds. 
here's another a view of an ocean view with an upper berth and sometimes that can be an upper berth or a sofa bed in there as well. So it just gives you a little bit of an idea with the cabins. All of them have got en suites, they've naturally got shower and toilet. Some of them are a little larger depending what grade you go and depending on where the, in the ship um, you're located. One of the questions that we did have was where's the best place to be and always central in the middle of the ship and if you can lower down everybody's got this great idea let's be at the top of the ship and, and that's fantastic but if you're ever worried about movement of the ship you have less movement the further down you are and in the centre of the ship but we'd like to guide you as well for the better times to travel maybe September, October, November when the sea is usually a little calmer in the Pacific but um, you can be lucky all year round. Where are we going to cruise? We've had a look at the ships. Let's have a look and see where we're going to go. And the next slide is just a uh, little example of an eight night cruise. Departing um, with Carnival Spirit, an eight night cruise, leaving Sydney, visiting a beautiful island of Numea, um, a lovely little island of Mare, and then it heads to Isle of Pines, which is pictured at the top. And that is one of those islands you can really only get to by ship. The um, ship will berth and you'll head off on the little tender boats across to the most beautiful, pristine, sandy, powder beaches and lots of activities are set up along the beach. Isle of Pines has actually got a beautiful uh, snorkeling area as well and a little shop just so you can have a, a little bit of fun there. So you can see it's around about 965 per person quad chair. That's generally for the adults and then the children pay or the third and fourth person pay, plays a lesser price and that's based on the 25th of October. I've lost track a little bit, that might be school holidays. Another example is Vanuatu and Caledonia and I love it when they go to Port Vila because in this case you visit Isle of Pines, Mystery Island, Santo, Wala and Port Vila and ladies I know you want to do some shopping. Um, you've got duty free here, you've got markets here. The ships do have a tropical night usually and um, in Port Vila you can get everything, all the beautiful sarongs and all the bits and pieces that go to it. The gentlemen are thinking, no, we don't want to do that. They can sit down at one of the restaurants and have coconut crab um, and just sit out there and watch the world go by with maybe a cold beer in hand. Or also at Port Vila, you can um, go to one of the most spectacular waterfalls, uh, the cascading waterfalls that you actually walk through. So that's a really, one of my little favourites. 11 nights, not too long, but a beautiful start from 1255. And that's in February next year. So maybe miss the first couple of days at school and uh, spoil yourself. That's Carnival. Of course, Carnival have lots of different itineraries, uh, long and short. We're just giving you a few ideas. But P&O are in the mix as well. And this is a picture of Pacific Jewel. Now, I have to be really honest. Um, when I think of P&O, I thought um, maybe they've got older ships. They've been around for a while. But we had a conference on board Pacific Jewel just a couple of weekends ago and I was absolutely flabbergasted. That is a fabulous ship as well. The facilities on board absolutely surprised me and uh, gave us really, really good value for money. So I'm a good um, advocate for P&O now with all the things they've got on board as well. So um, beautiful itineraries out to the Pacific, up the Queensland coast, around Tasmania and we'll be showing you a few of those uh, shortly but um, just sitting that ship out under the tropical um, ocean. I've got three ships, Pacific Jewel that I travelled on, Pacific Pearl and Pacific Dawn and one of the things that I really really loved about this was the circus at sea. So much entertainment, the, the um, oh, circus acts were absolutely phenomenal. You can see it there out on the back deck under the stars, weather permitting, just superb, um, absolutely terrific. Of course they've got the casino on board for the big children and I've got to tell you that uh, the casinos are a lot of fun if you just take it like that. They give away money on P&O 
I know because they gave mine to everybody else. <laughs> Just a bit of fun. Um, and they've also got Segways on board, so you can hire the Segways, those funny little one or two wheeled bikes. And they've got a zip line that goes right across this deck. So lots of activities that you wouldn't think of doing um, available on the cruise as well. So let's have a look where they go. Um, we're going to be looking at the Pacific Island Hopper, so seven night cruise from Brisbane. The advantages of going up at Brisbane, P&O based some of their ships up there because it's so popular, but you fly to Brisbane and then you're a little bit warmer already. So if you're travelling through the, the winter school holidays, you might have a day or a day and a half where the weather's a bit cool before it reaches uh, that warmness. But from Brisbane, it's warm straight away. So a lovely little itinerary there. Numir again, the French um, island, Lifu, such a beautiful little island in the Loyalty Islands and again Vila. So nice snorkeling, a bit of shopping, a really, really nice itinerary. And that's seven nighter. That's good if you just want to try it out from around 679. But from um, Sydney again, we've got Pacific Jewel. This is a super special that we've got here now. It's a 10 night cruise. It's in November this year, which I think the weather is absolutely superb, nice and warm. And uh, that, this particular one, we've got $100 on board credit. That means uh, we kick off your spending money. So anything that you want to put that towards on the ship, uh, we, we're starting it off for you. So sail away out to the Pacific uh, with $100 spending money. Maybe it's a shore tour or maybe it's... Um, some money in the spa or maybe some fabulous family photographs that you can have taken. So let's have a look about the things that you can do when you're travelling off the islands. Snorkeling. There we are. Can you imagine just um, having a chance to spoil yourself, regaining some time with your partner and the kids are either in the kids club or maybe they're out visiting the locals as, as is the case here. And I have a beautiful shot of my daughter when she was just three years old arriving on an island and this gorgeous little Fijian girl came and they exchanged looks. Why are you so blonde and why are you so dark? And it's just one of those beautiful interactive photos. So you could put yourself in that picture as well. So many different things um, that you can do while you're tra travelling around the islands of our beautiful Pacific right under our nose. Um, here's a happy little man sitting waiting to have a chat. You can see in the background there they'll have cricket set up, they'll have all sorts of ball games and uh, lots of activities when you travel to these little islands, little mystery islands with, with lots of nice things to do um, as you pass away the day. I talked about shopping and ladies, this is it, the Port Vila, the market for shopping for island night, but there's some beautiful boutiques there as well and some wonderful duty-free shopping and um, other duty-free items um, in Port Vila. One of my definite little favourites when you're travelling out to the Pacific. But it's not just all about the Pacific. We can say, if you if you just want a quick short break, why not come for the Australia's, Australia Day, the biggest one yet, with the three P&O ships all sitting in Sydney Harbour. Um, any guesses for the day? 26th of January of course and this cruise three nights from $605 but what happens on board there's a lot of activities in the harbour we've got um, lots of fun on the ship lots of music around the ship you've got flyover from the Air Force um, you've got the ferry races in the harbour and then the evening most spectacular fireworks over Sydney Harbour and you've just got the best views uh, best seats in the house to, to watch all the fireworks. So why not try it? It's um, an absolutely fun weekend. You'd feel like you've been away a lot longer. Now when Pacific Jewel does all of it, all the, that travelling, she'll be coming down to Adelaide, uh, which is really, really exciting and very surprising because I actually thought these cruises were all sold out. So if you don't want to fly anywhere and you've got, you want to book a quad cabin, from $1,039 for your two adults. This cruise leaves from Adelaide, heads across to Kangaroo Island, drops down to Rogue, into Melbourne, 
down to Burnie in Tasmania and I drove to Cradle Mountain from there down to Port Arthur and you cruise up the river and you see that mystical site of Port Arthur. Um, that's absolutely breathtaking day. Into Hobart, back around to Melbourne, across to Port Lincoln and into Adelaide. And that is just absolutely superb little itinerary. No flights at all on the 5th of March 2015. It includes, again, $100 spending money because Phil Hoffman Travel have taken out some group space. So we give you the very, very best deals. So um, no passports required either. So that might make life a little bit easier if you just want to have a try. If that's too long, we do have a little nine night cruise and it does uh, most of the activities, but it only travels down to Burnie. So again, uh, 24th of February, $100 on board credit that's per cabin, not per person. Um, but it, as I said, it, it kicks off the um, sail away drinks and maybe an excursion. And then if you think, well, maybe I'd love to take my children on a little flight, you can fly across to Melbourne, give them the experience of the flight, transfer to the port, and then cruise to Port Lincoln and back into Adelaide. And that little three night deal, 13th of March from $369, that is just superb. What a wonderful way to cruise into your own port of Adelaide. And a lot of people say um, Adelaide's a boring port. It's not when you come in on a ship. It's just superb. Um, so that's, that's some really nice little temptations. But I have to tell you that those are selling out like crazy. Um, another option for summertime, maybe you want to go to see the Australian Open um, Tennis. You can leave on the 19th of January, which happens to be school holidays, leave from Sydney, cruise down to Melbourne. Included in your ticket are some Australian Open tickets. So you go and watch the tennis and then cruise back up to Sydney. So all of the prices that we're quoting you are cruise only and not including flights. So it varies. The different airlines have got different specials. Some people like to take the train or use up frequent flyer points, so lots of uh, different variations there. Now, the next one we're looking at is Princess Cruises. Fly over to Sydney and can you picture yourself sailing under the Sydney Harbour Bridge? Now, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, this is just one of those moments, uh, doesn't matter which cruise terminal you're leaving from, it's just a spectacular uh, event. And a couple of nights later, you might be sitting out there, you've had dinner and having not movies under, well, you've got movies under the stars, not drive-in movie, you can have dive-in movie because they show movies and musicals right there under the stars. So you can have that cocktail served right to your spa. And by day, this beautiful crystal clear screen, um, they have activities for the children where they're playing games against each other. Coincidentally, that's just around the corner from the free ice creamery as well. So you can be eating ice creams all day long. But don't tell Shannon. Um, this is a picture of some of the amazing musicals that are on every night after dinner, whether they're visiting entertainers, whether they're the own uh, ship crew, or whether they're um, jugglers, mu musicians, so many different um, points of entertainment. So Princess Cruises also has kids clubs, lots of activities, different pools, hot areas, adults only areas, um, all uh, spectacular. But with Princess, the cruise ships are going over to Asia as well. So if you've thought, I would really love to go across to Singapore or Phuket or Thailand, but like to come back to your ship with um, European food, what a wonderful way to explore the East. So you can leave from Perth and cruise up, or you can fly up and do different sectors as well. And here's some beautiful images, Singapore down the bottom with the, the lion and the beautiful Marina Park Bay Sands with a swimming pool right up on that top level. And they've got some wonderful gardens next to that um, beautiful building now as well. So lovely way to go and visit the East without necessarily traveling from um, airport to hotel, back to another airport to see so many different areas. New Guinea's in there as well, and New Guinea is such a beautiful place to visit with children. There's a lot of war history for those people that um, love the history, 
but the children up in New Guinea, absolutely exceptional, very, very welcoming. And then we're travelling on to Royal Caribbean. This is another brand and you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between P&O and Princess and Royal Caribbean? We'll ask you what you like and we'll look at the time of the year and where you want to travel to and for how long and we'll work with you very closely to make you sure that we give you a couple of options but the very best deals of those options. Royal Caribbean have got three ships here at the moment, Rhapsody, Radiance and Voyager of the Sea. Rhapsody is the, the smaller of the, the ships, but gee, she's a lot of fun. She does a lot of the music cruises. But um, uh, Radiance and Voyager, they've got water slides, they've got these putt-putt courses, and you can see where they're cruising. South Pacific, Fiji, New Zealand, round Australia, Tasmania, and also up the Queensland coast. So. If you're looking to go from Sydney, Brisbane, maybe visit Dreamworld and then go up to the um, Barrier Reef, then it's a lovely cruise. And that's an aerial shot. That's Voyager of the Seas, the, one of the big ones, because she's got the rock climbing wall just behind that middle funnel. You can see a lot of the ships or have got big tennis courts and basketball courts. This particular one is showing you your amazing putt putt course and then that funny shape on the left of the screen, that's the inline skating rink. So plenty to do for the kids there and plenty to do for the adults as well. Um, love these ships, they, they're a lot of fun as well. Voyager of the Sea has got something quite special and that is an ice skating rink because that's the first thing that pops into your mind when you think of cruising, an ice skating rink. No, this is, this is pretty unique to the big ships. There's some very big ships, even bigger than uh, Voyager now, but down here in Australian waters, it is the only one with the ice skating rink with fantastic shows by ex-Olympic ice skaters. And also you can get on, on the ice and skate yourself. You can see the rock climbing wall and you can see the mall. They've got parades right down. That's the inside of the ship. There's um, a huge mall with lots of shops and a barber shop and lots of little bars. So, so much to do for all age groups. But for the kids, on the left, we've got Shrek. Um, so the DreamWorks characters are on board all of Voyages um, and Royal Caribbean ships. So nothing funnier than getting a shadow and having Shrek directly behind you. Um, for a photo opportunity. Kids and big kids like myself think it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so where do we go? This is Radiance of the Seas, same thing, nine night cruise heading out 11th of October. We um, include their $75 on board credits and that's starting from around $1,065. The next slide is Voyager of the Seas. This is the big cruise ship with the ice skating rink. So that's what appeals to you. She's going a little further afield and this is school holidays. So the price has come up a little bit. She's actually going to Fiji, Latoka and Suva as well as Numea. But if I was going on Voyager, I don't need to get off the ship because there's so many activities and fun. And we kick off with $75 on board credit there as well. So hopefully that's given you um, a little idea where all the cruise ships go. Now that we've just touched Australia this time, but there's lots of different cruise ships all over the world and we'd love in another seminar or if you're thinking of travelling further, um, head off to maybe America or Europe. Look at that. We've got Hawaii, Disney, Asia and Caribbean. So I've just put the question up if you'd like to all respond as to if you'd be interested in looking at cruising further afield outside of really Australia um, or the South Pacific. If you're interested, if you can just um, select those places that you would be interested in going and then we can get some feedback on where you'd like to head to. Um, Disney look very popular. I think they're a bit amazing. Do you want to just touch really briefly on the Disney cruises, Krista, just to give an idea of that, that I, they actually I do? Can't talk, I, can't talk, I can't talk briefly on Disney. <laughs> I, I told Belinda <laughs> today that um, part of my job and, and all of my money goes on travelling myself. So when I was in America, there was an opportunity to have a look at Disney Magic 
um, in the that was heading off to the Caribbean. I have never been blown away by such an amazing ship. The kids are in another world. You register before you go on, so all the kids do this interactive experience on the computer before you jump on the Disney cruise ship. And when you walk on, there's some nice artwork around. And when you walk past, um, there's a beautiful picture of Tinkerbell and the fairies in the garden, and it's interactive um, motion sensors. So as you walk past, suddenly Tinkerbell's talking to you and waving at you. And my daughter's listening, and she's just going, I want to go on that ship. Mickey's, uh, Mickey Mouse is running around, all the characters, and um, Mario from our Modbury office and myself, we were like two little children. Um, one of the girls from our Modbury office, she then proceeded to book her own holiday, and she said her children were enchanted. The restaurant at night starts off in black and white, so the menus are black and white, the dress of the, the characters um, and the people serving you was black and white. But gradually over the night, when, when you go on to your next course, the colours start coming in. It might be a red theme and a blue theme. At the end of the night, everything's um, a kaleidoscope of colours. So absolutely spectacular for children. But for adults, they've got some really, really unique areas as well. So what a wonderful cruise line. Absolutely adored it. Definitely. Well, thank you. So, um, yes, it was quite um, quite clear that everybody wanted to learn about Disney cruises, well, the vast majority. So, yeah, we'll definitely see what we can put together on that one. Okay. We will. Yes. Um, so just looking at that slide, when, when you book with Phil Hoffman Travel, not only do we get you the, the best deals, and we certainly source with all the cruise ship companies, we take out um, group departures, not that you have to travel with a group, but that gives you the very best buying deal. And uh, so that gives great opportunities. We like to think that we re remove any of the stress. You don't have to search the internet. We do that for you. We talk about money on board and, and research the destinations that you're traveling to. We talk to you about travel insurance, which is the money we hope you waste, but you certainly can't travel without it and any health requirements. So we do the whole total package, talk to you about all those little things you might be nervous about, what should I wear on board, uh, you know, how do we sign up for, to get our cruise tickets, all of those things. Um, we make it a lot of fun and work with you on that. So that's our travel tips um, right through all of our programs. Um, but just um, in finishing up, and I think we've got some question time, but we're more than a travel agent too. So if, you're, if you've if you been um, watching this tonight and think, well, look at that, they, they do other things. Um, of course we book your flights, of course we book hotels, we do flights all over the world. We also have an amazing chef that comes in, so we have Italian cooking classes. You can get someone else to babysit the children, come in there, so much fun. You arrive at 11 in the morning, cook up a storm. You you can either watch Renato or join in making the pasta and then you get to taste the wines of the Tuscan era, um, area and eat the food. So by the time you leave, you've had a wonderful afternoon and, and ready to go home and face the family. Okay, so have we got any questions? Excellent. That's a Sorry. terrible shot, Belinda. I've just taken off my headset. <laughs> Okay, so if you've got any questions that have come to mind while the webinar's been running tonight, feel free to please pop them down in your chat box and we'll do our very best to get to them. There's quite a few of you on here tonight, so we'll do our very best. We can't promise, but we will on limited time. When you submitted your registration, we did get you to submit any questions. So we might just go through a couple of those, Krista, that we haven't really completely touched on. Um, so maybe we can just go... I a little bit more detail about pricing for kids. So the, if you had, you know, two adults and two children, it's not the actual price times for, is it? No, it's not. And I think that's the part that gets very confusing, certainly for the brochures. Um, and each one of the brochures vary of how they put their product up there. So generally, if there were four of you in your cabin, you would take your, your twin price, um, and then you would add on the third and fourth person rate. Now that's for older children and then they have, uh, depending again what 
the age of the child is, that might be less again. So typically a twin cabin might work out um, 749 per adult, but when you put two adults and two children, that brings that down to around about 599 per person, not counting tiny babies. So it does, um, it's two at full price and then um, a much lesser price for the third and fourth person. And so that's fine if they just want to contact you and give you, um, you know, some a rough idea of when they want Absolutely. to go, who's going, and you can work out what ships are going to offer what pricing based on the different cruisings. It, absolutely, because it does vary what deal we've got in, in what that is. So it's better to do a, a one on one um, questionnaire on that. Excellent. Okay, so um, somebody else has asked that they're afraid of getting seasickness, and what's the best way to prevent it while you're on board or before you travel? Seasickness is always one of the big ones, and usually, if we ask people, Have you cruised before? No, we haven't then why do you think you get seasick? And because they'd been out on Uncle Tom's little boat bobbing around the ocean. The ships are so big now, well, luxurious, and they've got stabilisers. So should the weather be in any way inclement, those stabilisers come out automatically. So that's really reassuring. And on that very big ship, uh, Voyager, they even float the water tank. So if there's a wind in a certain direction, um, that will keep that ship very stable on the ocean so you'll have minimal effect. So that's number one. Number two is finding the right time of the year to travel. And it's, it is a little bit hard to predict because, um, as I said, I love September through to November, but that doesn't mean um, March, April, May are glorious times to travel. Over Christmas, sometimes you can get a bit of swell out on the Pacific, but then um, you, you can have lovely, lovely calm days as you're travelling around the island. If you're worried about seasickness, I always say go to your doctor and just discuss it with them because that's depending on the age of your child, what you can give them. And I know we had a look and uh, there's certain products that you can have for very young children, two and three years old, but I would always ask my doctor. Having worked on a ship, um, somebody said to me, eat green apples. And so it does something crazy, but um, it does seem to work. So there's a lot of natural remedies as well. I find if you eat a lot, it's got no way to squish around and so you feel fantastic. Excellent. All right. Thank you for that. Um, somebody else has asked, um, can my children attend Kids Club at night or have a babysitter in our room at night? Um, again, for, for Carnival, definitely. You can, you've seen from the slides that they've got all that available. It does vary on the ship and it does vary on the um, amount of babysitters that are qualified on board the cruise ship. Obviously, if they've got 600 kids on board a ship of maybe 3,000, there may not be enough babysitters for everyone. But if you've... Um, on Carnival, they have got areas where you can leave the children there. Or what we did, a lot of places have the walkie-talkies, so we would take it in turns to, to be with the children or, or come back, back out for dinner. I took my mother along and that was easy because she used to babysit. So <laughs> that was pretty good too. But if you don't want to do that, definitely um, there are babysitters available. Excellent. And can we sort of just um, remind everybody about the age, like the minimum ages to go on the particular cruise ship? So I used to always think that, um, you know, really to get looked after in Kids Club, they had to be three, but I don't believe that it's that old now. No, there's, there's some of the ships, some of the ships now um, from two years old, some of them from one year old. They must, um, generally, the uh, staff on the cruise ships won't change nappies. So um, you would need to call in now and then just to make sure that's taken care of. Some of the ships they do, they say take swim nappies on board as well. Um, but uh, definitely um, a few variations. Excuse me. You can generally go on board from six months, but from one year they will take kids in the, the junior kids club. And even if on some of the ships where the age group might be a little older, you can certainly go in there with your child and play with your child. You just can't leave them there, but at least you've got access to all the toys and things. 
Okay, excellent. So um, we've got another question. How soon should you book a cruise? Is it better to book it closer to the departure date um, or is it better to get well out and um, get the better price that way? Um, that can that can vary. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting some water here. Um, that can vary from um, cruise to cruise. If you're talking children, you're talking school holidays. So in the school holidays, the ship um, has to have a certain amount of children allocated on the ship in different age groups. So if you're looking at going in those school holidays, it's better to book early so that even though there's cabins, your age group of children might be already allocated for. Yes. That's, that's the cover for insurance and that's also so that they've got enough room in the different kids' clubs. Okay, excellent. All right, and um... sorry, I'll just, I'll just add to that too. Oh. Sometimes, um, if you think if you want to book right ahead, um, and there's, um, you know, am I buying at the cheapest or dearest rate? We'll always review. So if there's a special coming out, we can go back in and see if something better is available for your cabin. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And um, finally, our last question. Um, how much do you spend on meals and activities on average for a family of four? Now, I know that the meals are in, in, included, aren't they, generally? Um, all of the meals on the cruise ship are included. So you've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, morning tea and afternoon tea. On Princess, um, you've got um, included room service as well. You've got that buffet area. Uh, which is fantastic. You've got a pizzeria on those ships and outdoor grill. So all of that's included. Some of the ships have specialty restaurants where you never have to eat if you don't want to. But let's say you're on Voyager of the Seas and you want to go in and eat in the themed restaurant, Johnny Rockets, or in the Mexican restaurant, there might be a slight cover charge. As I say, you never have to go in, but you might think, hey, five, six dollars. Who cares? We're going to go and have a lot of fun and um, experience something a little bit different. So generally, um, people say they're not going to go into those restaurants and they go, yeah, that looks that looks fun or just something different on the cruise. But as I said, that you never have to because you've got all your meals included and that's what makes it so great for your budget. Yeah, well, it's amazing how quickly your meals add up when you go away on holidays, especially even your snacks and stuff. So, yeah, that's, that's actually amazing value for money what about the activity a little, little snack will be nicking up and, and having a little hamburger that's all included or a slice of pizza or the ice cream never go hungry oh, i think my kids are looking all the ice cream, cream yes i've got the ice cream you heard that didn't you <laughs> yeah. and what about One the, of the activities questions i had too uh, so all the activity well activities are generally included but if you are wanting to do maybe a special spin class or maybe you want to have a massage, then there's a cost for that. The zip line that I talked about, there is a cost to that, but it wasn't so so high. Um, so some of the activities, there is a small extra surcharge, but going into the pictures, watching the movies under the big screen, no extra cost for that at all. Fabulous. And, well, and talking about activities, one of the questions I saw too was, will my husband be bored? <laughs> Having worked on a cruise ship, we used to um, be based in Sydney and we used to do walk-arounds for the public before September the 11th when you, you could still do it. And the families would come on because the wife was trying to convince the man to go on the cruise. And as they would walk off the ship, the men would go, um, I need to get on the ship. Where can we book? Because they were so amazed at the amount of activities, the amount of areas that you could go to without feeling that you had um, a thousand people around you. And that's the other thing. You hear the numbers of people on the, on the cruise ship. The cruise ship might hold 3,000 to 6,000 people. You have to, you get on that ship and you think, where's everybody gone? Because everyone's going to different activities, whether it be cooking demonstration, salsa dance classes, a stretch class out on the top deck, yoga, all those things that you think you'd like to try, you can do that. For the gentleman, it might be photography, it might be learning how to put those photos onto your computer, even taking a better photo, lots and lots of different um, 
<clears throat> activities. They've got art options, they've got wine tasting, and so the familia will walk through the different wines, and sometimes on some of the ships they'll pair those wines with food. We had a mixology class where you learnt to do uh, mixed cocktails. Sadly, we had to try them as well um, <laughs> when we were on our last little cruise. So generally, it's the men that go, "Wow, we had no idea there was so much to do." So, and the women breakfast in bed, maybe the beds are made every day. Nobody, um, you don't have to uh, cook for 10 days. The only worst part of that is you come home and the beds remain unmade and nobody's doing the cooking. <laughs> That's when you book your next cruise. That sounds fabulous. Well, thank you, Krista. You've been amazing in just giving us a really good taste about family cruising and I guess what's involved in cruising for, you know, a family holiday. Um we want to remind you, if you haven't already, in conjunction with Phil Hoffman Travel, Mum Central are giving away an eight-night family cruise for two adults and two children um, to the South Pacific, uh, valued at $4,950, including all the taxes and charges and return airfares from Adelaide to Sydney. If you do have more than two children, you can actually purchase you know, ticket for the extra children. It ends at midnight tonight. So if you haven't entered already, jump onto Mum Central website. Um, I'll send you the details in an email very shortly and enter because, you know, one of our mums and or dads has to win it and um, it would be an absolutely amazing taste to cruising if you it, haven't been before. It is a fantastic prize, I've got to say. And if you've only got one adult and two children, I'm happy to come along and show you <laughs> around the cruise ship. And being on <laughs> I the think carnival. we'll be fighting for that. Is being on the carnival spirit, you can test out the green thunder. <laughs> Try yeah, yeah. Watch, watch me laugh. And if, if nobody believes you, I can show you the video. It's so much fun and um, for all the family. So if you don't win that prize, or we must, must, must enter it because it's totally free. Yes. Um, but um, I can't wait to meet the the person that wins. Lucky winner. So what we're going to do is I'm going to send you an email shortly with a summary of what we've talked about tonight plus a special offer for the first five people who book um, a book, a cruise mentioning the webinar with Phil Hoffman Travel. Um, so thank you very much, Krista. Check out your inboxes for further info. And um, we really, really appreciate you spending your time with us tonight and learning more about family cruising. Thank you very and much. Bon voyage, as bon they voyage. say. Thank you so much for listening. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye.